we're making a pretty big claim. We're making a claim that here we are entering a second machine age where instead of overcoming the limitations of our muscles like we did in the first machine age with the industrial revolution with steam power and electric power and the internal combustion engine what we're doing here is overcoming the limitations of our individual minds in a simple villa on the outskirts of bristol lives dr gray walter a neurologist who makes robots as a hobby just over half a century ago, robots started exploring the world. These tortoises were built in 1948 and were among the first electronic autonomous robots. This model is named Elsie, and she sees out of a photoelectric cell which rotates above her body. When light strikes the cell, driving and steering mechanism sends her hurrying towards it. Today, their successes are almost infinitely more sophisticated, and they've moved from the lab into the real world. Google's driverless cars have traveled more than a million miles on public roads already. Over the years, there's been no single major breakthrough. Instead, different technologies have improved dramatically. Sensors, machine learning, computer vision, and laser scanning. Who are you? They've created a technology convergence for advances in robotics, or a sweet spot for a robot revolution. Who am I? You are Tony. There is no one robotic future. Some think the result will be mass unemployment and perhaps the extinction of the human species. The other future is a cybernetic meadow where we live free from labor, all watched over by machines of loving grace, with robots boosting our productivity, our social well-being, and our health. Parts of both those futures are being created here at the Italian Institute of Technology. Basically what we try to do is to reproduce functionalities that nature has developed for three billion years um, into artificial systems that can be used to help humans. The Walkman robot looks fearsome, and at 120 kilograms, with the power of a superbike, it could pack a punch. But it's designed to help humans in hazardous situations too dangerous for rescue workers, and it was developed in response to the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Well, like ours, Walkman uses his head to see the world, but this is how he sees it. It's rather different. But he's using two cameras which work a bit like eyes to see what's in front of him, but they're combined with a laser scanner up on top here, which is constantly creating a 3D representation of the environment in which Walkman is in. That ability to understand the world is much more important than its strength or bulk. Hi, Icub. The Icub may look childlike, but it's smarter, more social, and it can learn. I am ready to collaborate with you. Can you please pass me the chocolate bar? Thank you very much. We are trying to make iCub a good collaborator for humans, and we believe that the key for good collaboration is the ability of the two partners of anticipating or predicting what the other person is going to do. Just... Prosthetics is where some of the most impressive advances have been made. Daniel Melville was born with one hand. Now he's trialing robotic replacements. I feel more cyborg because it looks cooler as well, and it makes me feel a lot more confident wearing it. Open Bionics, a UK company, is behind this 3D printed hand. It can be custom built and fitted in only two days at a cost of £2,000, far cheaper than most devices. We will see children and adults with completely customised designed hands in the future, that whether they're in the style of their favourite superhero, their favourite football team, um, it, it could be anything, and it could look like anything. It doesn't even have to have the human shape. Medicine is already benefiting from the robot revolution. IBM's Watson is helping clinicians make cancer diagnoses. The Da Vinci surgical system helps human surgeons be more precise and even operate from another continent. Robots that tower over the operating table might themselves disappear. Researchers at Imperial College London have developed miniaturized robots that work inside the human body. Injected into the bloodstream, they allow a surgeon to operate on the cellular level, and so at the very earliest stages of disease. The type of robot we are making, actually getting smaller and smaller, can be actually 
delivered in the needle form. So therefore, you, that you don't need to make incisions. So they can actually follow the uh, curved anatomical pathways reaching to the site. But improving human life isn't just about saving it. This robot chef from London-based Moly Robotics will go on sale in 2017. It will automatically prepare more than 2,000 meals at the touch of a smartphone. On today's menu, crab bisque with a garnish of tarragon and a drizzle of olive oil. And the entertainment stars of the future may well be androids. Robo Thespian, built by a company in Cornwall, took to the stage at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival this year. Oh, I was a horrid girl. You're not horrid. I've always been horrid. Shall we play a game? I need to get hold of Raymond. I expect he's at a conference. That's all a lot of fun, until a robot takes your job. As machines get more skilled, they also become more employable at the expense of humans. It starts with autonomous vehicles replacing taxi and lorry drivers, but jobs in hospitality, accounting and even law will be at risk too. Research by Deloitte predicts that as many as 35% of UK jobs could be replaced by robots. Others argue that just as the first industrial revolution destroyed jobs in manual labour but created entirely new categories of work, so too will robots. There will be new human needs and there will be new jobs that none of us can predict in advance. Already there are people now doing jobs that nobody would have envisaged 20 or 30 years ago. And I think they'll be open to people for, with a whole range of abilities. Uh, but of course, the more we can educate and train people so they can get into the high quality jobs, the better. But I, I'm not a pessimist. I don't think that we will all end up uh, unemployed. I think actually we'll just be doing different things and quite possibly more rewarding things. But there is no guarantee that this second industrial revolution will follow the same rules. Tech progress is the only free lunch out there. It is making our pie bigger. Translation, it's making us, in aggregate, a great deal better off, a great deal wealthier. Now, the challenge is that there is no economic law that says that as that pie grows, it's going to be divided up in a, quote, fair way, or divided up the same way that it was five years ago, ten years ago. But maybe the whole robot revolution makes the very concept of a job rather old-fashioned. What is so big and important about having a job? The whole way that the system works is that you have to have a job to get money, to buy food, to live. I think we're going to have to change that. We're going to have to break out of that and for, say, really, having a job is not important. It's best if you don't have a job, enjoy yourselves, and uh, we need to move towards that. Let the technology do the work. Why do humans have to have jobs? Economic questions are pressing, but so are ethical ones. Robotic systems are being used more and more in warfare. Is it really right to delegate the decision to kill a human to a machine. That's a very strong moral argument in my view. But my biggest concern now that I'm, I'm more mature in the field is really about global security. The United States is very much pushing the technology and so now what they want to do is to try to get at their military advantage again, get an edge by having these autonomous weapons. That's weapons that can go out and select their own target and kill them without any human involvement. But what they're th not thinking about, and it's very, very blinkered, because what happens when everybody has them? If the near term is complicated, the long term future is bewildering. The robot revolution is happening right now. I believe it's really in its early days. And the phrase I always use when I think about what's going on is, uh, we ain't seen nothing yet the advances that have come so far, these are not the crowning achievements of the second machine age. These are the warm-up acts, and the really interesting stuff is, is yet to come. Robots right now are like smartphones loaded with apps, very clever at dedicated tasks, but not very adaptable. This iCub here has legs and it can balance. You can even give it a little shove. Sorry, 
and it'll stay on its own two feet. That's so it can be more mobile in the world. And robots are going to become a bigger part of all our lives. They're also going to keep getting more intelligent. One day they might be as smart as us, and after that they could be even smarter. They may not always be as friendly as this guy here. One goal of researchers is to build a general artificial intelligence, much more like the human mind. If we one day develop machines that are superior to us in general intelligence, then this machine superintelligence might be in a very strong position to shape the future according to its preferences. And uh, hopefully those preferences will be aligned with ours and it will be a great win. But, but that's basically why I think it will eventually be a big deal. It will be something as important as the rise of Homo sapiens. If one is thinking about uh, the long-term prospects for, for humanity or life on this planet, then machine superintelligence does seem to be one of the major, if not the most important uh, event that will occur at some point. Superintelligence is sometimes called the singularity. Its evangelists believe that superintelligent, benevolent machines will erase poverty and injustice at a stroke and allow us to live forever by coming up with innovations we can't even dream of. Others warn that superintelligence could be humanity's last invention. And according to a Sky News survey, 40% of us fear that robots could eventually wipe out humans. Superintelligence is a long way off, if indeed it is feasible. But this isn't a robotic future, it's happening right now. Tom Cheshire, Sky News.